Hey, we'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsor, Isotope, makers of software and plugins for audio repair, mixing, and mastering. We use Isotope products here at the High Gain. It's an important part of how we've been able to bottle pure podcast gold week after week. And guess what? Isotope offers one free month of Music Production Suite Pro, which has all the tools you need to mix, master, and repair audio. Also, you can get 10% off all other software using the promo code FRET10. That's F-R-E-T-1-0. All of this is at isotope.com, I-Z-O-T-O-P-E.com. Hey, this is Ed Peterson. And this here is John Kiltica. Ed. John, we're recording in beautiful West Seattle this week. Yeah. We switched it up. What do you think of that? I think that's pretty good. Yeah. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about guitars. Yeah. I thought that would be a nice change of pace. Are we going to keep this one super tight or are we going to make it easy breezy, just a real nice open conversation? Depends on how riveting you think you can be. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Get ready, folks. Edge of your seat. Edge of the seat. Yeah. Today we have a guitar. I hate it. Yeah, I know you do. Well, I guess we can just end the episode. This one's super tight. Hey, thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah. This is a Fender Offset Special. Is it? It is. So I thought I would take the tack of placing this here Offset Special guitar in the context of Fender's experiments all up. Can you hold it up? Yeah. If you had asked me what it was, I think just at first blush when it was sitting on the stand there, I would have said it's like some Strat variant. The body shape is closer to a Strat, I guess. It's more Stratty than Offsetty to me. Yeah, it's kind of their idea of a mashup between a Strat and something more akin to a Jazzmaster. Yeah. It's not like 50-50. Right. Body shape is like... More Strat. More Strat than Offset. Yeah. What we're looking at here is somewhat offset, more strat, as Ed mentions. Yeah. Semi-hollow. It's got an F-hole in it. Ed loves those. Ugh. What are these pickups, Ed? Those are Jazzmaster-style... They look like Jazzmaster-style single coils. They're not P90s. They're not. They're humbuckers. Oh, so it was a trick question. It was. It's got the pole bangers right in the middle. A humbucker should be like 50-50, right? The coils are stacked. Oh, that thing. They're not very common, though, right? I don't know if I would call them uncommon, but yeah, you don't see them a whole lot. This has a tone and a volume and yeah. a pickup selector switch, and yeah. somebody has wisely chosen to take off the bridge and tailpiece and replace them with mastery gear. Great. It's kind of a tobacco burst. That's what it looks like, yeah. Maple neck. Three position switch, it looks like. Yes. It's not strat style, five position, kind of a blade thing. Nope. What are those switches called? That style of switch? This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toggle yeah. switch? Toggle, yeah. Beverages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I seem to be going further afield than the beverages thing. The little jangle chord at the end, I think, is just kind of like, ah, something. Make it up as I go. Sure, that's great. Yeah. Ed, yeah. I'm going to go first because I want to thank you for, once again, buying me a coffee beverage from Uptown Espresso here in West Seattle. Home of the Velvet Foam. Home of the Velvet Foam. This is some sort of latte construction. That's a grande soy latte. Delicious. And it's going to go great with my lime-flavored buble water that I have here. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's great. I went Vente style. The big boy. Ooh. An Americano. A couple shots of espresso, some hot water. Like a coffee, but fancy boy. Our friends at Uptown, they've been just killing it lately. So shout out to Uptown Espresso. They're pretty good. And you've got a mason jar. What color is this, John? Some sort of cloudy. It's in the yellow family, <laughs> but it has shades of green and brown in it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to just flat out say it's yellow because we've had issues with that. Recently, there have been issues. 
I went into Thunder Road Guitars. Thunderroadguitars.com? Yeah, that place. Yeah. And it was packed. There were all kinds of people in there, friendly faces, smiles everywhere. Yes. And our good friend Alex says, hey, Ed, this guitar. And he held up a Ibanez YY10. Yes. The guitar we had done. Yes. And he's like, this guitar is yellow. And I said, yeah, I'm colorblind. And John told me it's green, but I think it's yellow. And Alex says, oh, it's yellow. And then two more people, sample size of four, said that guitar is yellow. And then John comes out and says, oh, that guitar is green. And everyone was like, no. And I had to say, well, John's got like a doctorate in color or some shit. So you have to trust John. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if 80% of the population says one thing, are 80% of us just sucking down fake news? Think of all the dubious stuff 80% of the people think is true. Sure. Is that where you want to go with color assessment? In this case, I kind of do. But, you know, I'm walking in there with my MAGA hat on and my fake news. You're just in there to <laughs> cause trouble. <laughs> yeah. What color is that juice? It's kind of like, you know, when you get sick and your urine turns that weird cloudy color. It's kind of like a cloudy <laughs> urine color. It's grapefruit, lemons, apple, pear, two huge hunks of ginger, and a bundle thing of kale. That's the thing that gives it the color that you don't yeah. like. So, this is part of the Pawn Shop series. Oh, is it really? Okay. It is. Okay. Tell me about that pedal. This is a fuzz pedal made by our man Ernie Bailey over there at Wire Instruments. It has a nice breakup at the end of notes. Oh, that's sick. It's got to be that pedal. It sounds awesome. Late 60s. Okay. Fender realized that it had some classic designs mm -hmm. under its belt. So they started thinking, we've got enough cool designs that we could start mixing and matching and mashing up our own shit. They started doing that in 69 and have had a history of doing that ever since. Maybe people think that's new for them with the current Paranormal series, but they've been doing it for a long time. Okay. It all starts with our man, Babe. Bandsaw Babe. Virgilio Babe Simone. Oh. What happened to Bandsaw? Uh, uh, he got dead. Yep. He started working at Fender when he was just a kid and ended up being a product manager or something. But in the meantime, yep. 1969, they've got all this leftover stuff from models that were either discontinued out of strategic thinking or discontinued because it just didn't do well. Sure. There were two of them that Babe had something to do with. The Swinger. Did we do that? No. You take an unused Music Master body or a Bass 5 body and some Mustang necks and you put them together. And then you cut a big old scoop out of the ass. <laughs> Bandsaw babe style. Yeah, a big half moon looking thing. Mm -hmm. And then you cut off the headstock as if you're sharpening a pencil. Yeah. Yeah, pointy headstock with no curves on it. Right. And call that the swinger. I have to look it up. Oh, he does the scoop in the ass. Yeah. That dude with his bandsaw, he needs to calm down. Bandsawing stuff is kind of fun. I suppose. Babe was taking the initiative. Look at all this surplus stuff. What are we going to do? Throw it in the dumpster? No, right. no, no, no. Don't do that. I'll, I got you. I'll think of something. Yeah, yeah. And that's what Babe did. Yeah. It wasn't over yet. No. Also, the custom, and we have done that one, you get the custom by taking electric 12-string bodies and necks. Yeah. You modify the 12-string neck. You fill in six of the holes yes. so yes. that now it's a six-string guitar. And then you hand it over to Babe to cut a scoop out of the ass. <laughs> that has little bits and pieces of everything I hate. That is the worst headstock. And then you're bandsawing parts of the body. Man, this guy. Well, it didn't last very long. Remember, they were just using up parts. 
and neither of those guitars did well enough for them to manufacture no new parts. Really? Go that's figure. weird. Yeah, that's weird. That's... We're going to skip forward into our time, 1993, the Jagstang. Sure. The ethos of the time was getting the guitars cheap, mixing and matching parts because it was cheap. You see the pattern there. Cheap. Of course, we know about Kurt Cobain. Yeah. That is precisely what he did. Yep. Until 93, when he started working with Fender Mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Kurt Cobain has left the building. Yeah. But the Jagstang survives. Yep. 1994, Jagmaster. Yeah. You familiar with it? Jagmaster. Yeah. Proponents of that, Sonic Youth? Sure. I'm looking at it. It doesn't have the additional control panel on the upper horn. Right. So it's just got the three-way toggle, kind of like this thing. Yeah, and the humbuckers. Kind of like this thing. Yep. But not stacked side-by-side humbuckers. Yep. Like a normal sane person would have. (laughs) In 1997, Ed, yeah. they did two squires, a Helicaster. Yes. It was a Strat body with a fat headstock reversed. Oh. And you know the split coil pickups, like on a precision base? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It had yeah. three of those. Helicaster. Hate it. Okay, cool. <laughs> And the one that they did with that was the Jazzacaster. That was a Telecaster shape with reverse-wound Jazzmaster pickups. It had a smaller headstock, and they put a B-bender on it. Okay. Squire stuff. Squire stuff. But this one we're playing today is not a Squire. Let me uh, show you what we got here with these stacked humbuckers. As I mentioned, it is semi-hollow. There's an F-hole in it. Yep. Let's go around the horn like we do. Tone down neck pickup. Yep. Tone up bridge pickup. And then let's just go in the middle. Tone in the middle. What do you think that thing weighs? This thing is very light. Yeah. I can hear that sympathetic stuff behind the bridge. Yep. Our guy Nels Klein likes that. Yep. You know what I hate about this guitar? What do you hate about this guitar, Ed? It sounds pretty great. It's got those sympathetic strings behind it. Mm -hmm. It's got that bridge. And you get a little bit of that hollow body tone. That's a bummer. So I hate that I like the way it sounds. (laughs) I think it's pretty solid. And putting the mastery on it seems like a really sound decision. Always. Okay. Next thing they did in this kind of mix and match. Do you remember the year 1998? Yes. What do you remember about it? Not much. Uh, Do I remember it? Certainly things happened in 1998. I was hanging out with a baby is what I was doing. So you were in the weeds. In the weeds with a little baby. Yeah. That's probably what I was doing. Fender did two more of these mashups. The Toronado. Sure. Which was kind of like a jazz master shape, but it had covered humbuckers and the control layout was pretty much like a Les Paul, two volume, two tone. Not into it. Okay. There's a following for that one. Yeah. People seem to like that one. Yep. The other one they did was the Cyclone. Do you remember that one? I remember the names, but the shapes are not jumping out at me. You know, I think it's pretty cool that a company can realize like, wow, we've done some interesting things. Let's play with it. Yep. Let's see what we can come up with instead of let's just steal something from a competitor. Right. For Fender to realize we've got enough cool stuff we've done over the years. We can mess around with our own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite kind of weirdy mashup, and I think it would work for any shape, is Tele Hardware. Pickup configuration and bridge Uh and control panel on anything just works. That configuration on the offset, I really dig a lot. The Tele headstock is not my favorite, but yeah, you throw that Tele stuff on and it just looks killer. The Cyclone was another Mustang style shape, yep. but in addition to a single coil, they had a humbucker in the bridge. So a Mustang is two single coils, a Cyclone is one. There's a current Cyclone, three angled single coils, Strat style vibrato. It's got Jaguar style on off switches. Yes. And it's probably one per pickup would be my guess. It's pretty cool. 
Well, this thing is comfortable to play. Maple neck. Yeah. Nothing fancy. No binding. What is this one called? This is called the Offset Special. But this is an actual made in Fender, California. No. Oh. This is Mexican. Does sound kind of nice. Yeah. I don't think I'm imagining that. Yeah. Sounds great. So now we get into this actual series. Okay. In 2011, the Pawn Shop series is introduced. Mm -hmm. This guitar I'm holding is not part of it at its introduction. They start with three models. Okay. One is called the 51, Pawn Shop 51. Mm -hmm. One is called the 72, and one is called the Mustang Special. The 51 looks like a precision bass made into a guitar. That's probably the easiest way to describe that. Okay. You know the P bass of the early 50s, like 51? It had a pick guard that went up into both horns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like that. Okay. It's essentially a P bass in guitar form. One single coil, one humbucker. There was no tone control. It had two knobs. One is a volume, and you could push and pull it to tap the coil in the humbucker. Okay. And then the other was just a three-way knob. Weird. Click, click, click for pickup selection. And this is the 51. Yes. Pawn Shop 51. Man. Not your thing? No. Okay, Pawn Shop 72. The idea behind that one, Ed, was more of a mixture between a Telecaster and a Strat. Two humbuckers. And the knobs were a volume and a blender knob. You can blend between the two pickups with that knob. The 72 Pawn Shop Stratocaster? Uh Uh-huh. Also a semi-hollow. Yeah. The last of this initial year for the Pawn Shop series was the Mustang Special. I guess a lot of it is these guitars are so known in their main configuration. There are probably people who are like, oh, I like it because it's different. But I think for me, I see them and they make me uneasy. You know what I mean? It just looks wrong. So what's the deal with the Mustang? The Pawn Shop Mustang Special? Yeah, yeah. Two humbuckers. Yeah. Do you see the slider switches? Yeah. This has three-way slider switches, same as a regular Mustang. Right, right. Except that these pickups are humbuckers. Okay. So like on a regular Mustang, you can take them in and out of phase. Yes. So on this one, the three position, what does it do? It taps the coils. Okay. Slide it towards the neck, you're tapping that coil. Towards the bridge, you're tapping that one. So you can mix and match. Yep. And in the middle, it's just regular old humbucker. That is actually pretty cool. Recovery effects. Phantom operator. That <laughs> That's fun. That's great. That's such a fun pedal. You said other manufacturers don't do this so much. I was trying to think, well, how would you mash up a flying V and a Les Paul? That would look fucking terrible. I guess the Fender shapes feel more conducive to this sort of mashup. Yeah, Fender does have a rich history of not only the stuff they produced commercially, but even some of their failed ideas, they're able to go back and mine those for new things. Yeah. Second year of the Pawn Shop series. Okay. Brings us to this thing. Okay. There were two more released. Here's a caveat for all of this. The Pawn Shop series also included basses and amps. We're kind of covering guitars here. Yeah, it's out of scope. We're not going to scope creep this release. Yep. (laughs) We're on a tight deadline. Yeah. So the offset special, that's what this is. Part strat, part jazz in the eye of the beholder, I guess. (laughs) See our previous yellow-green conversation. Yeah. This is a strat to me. It's not an offset. Yeah, just the style of the trim. I start thinking Jazzmaster when I see that. For sure. It looks like a Strat that they put Jazzmaster hardware on. Jazz guts. Yeah. (laughs) Sounds great. The Jaguarillo. Ugh. Come on. (laughs) Jaguarillo? A humbucker and two single coils. A Jaguarillo or this, without a doubt, Jaguarillo. You'd go for that one? Oh, yeah. Blade, pickup selector, probably a five-way. Uh-huh. It looks more like 60s univoxy. It looks like someone ripping off a fender shape 
I almost just like this one. Oh. Yeah. I want everybody to make note. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Defender Jaguar Rillo of 2012. Yeah. Ed almost just likes it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. And even on the headstock, it just says Fender Jaguar. That helps too. Huh. So you're yeah. liking the way that looks yep. and you are starting to admit that this offset special sounds nice. Yes. The 2012 year, the second year of the Pawn Shop series yeah. is maybe more to your liking than the first one. Of all of them so far, this is the one, the Jaguarillo. It sounds terrible. They're marketing. They got to step that up. Speaking about sounding horrible and marketing, I'm going to digress here for a second. Oh, I love it. We've all seen pharmaceutical commercials where they say, check with your doctor. Bleeding eyeballs. Yeah. They all have the weird names. The weirdest one we're seeing now is called Nubeka. How does that not sound like a person's name? Nubeka? Sure. What am I going to take Nubeka for? Do you know? It's a prostate thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. And for like an hour afterwards, last night, we were following the cat around calling him New Becca. It's a weird name for a prostate drug, I suppose. But, you know, it's a good name for a cat. New Becca, Jaguarillo. Yeah. Ed? Yeah. In 2012, 10 years ago, what were you going to pay in $2012 for one of these? These are made in Mexico. Mexico. 10 years ago, my guess is it's 1049 You know what, Ed? Yeah. You're getting pretty good at this. <laughs> it was $1,079. Oh my God, within $30? Can you believe that? Hell yeah. You want to press your luck and tell me how much that is in today dollars? It's probably only like... 12 11 1300 bucks you look at this guitar and this is for sure a $1,300 guitar and I should say that we got this from our friends at thunderroadguitars.com yep you know what Ed yeah this sounds good yeah huh they did pawn shop guitars for one more year uh huh 2013 Okay. The two they did then, you will recognize. They did a Supersonic. Yep. And they did a 70s Strat Deluxe. And that was the end of the Pawn Shop series. Okay. Bye. Since then, they've done the Paranormal series. We know about that because they reissued the Supersonic during that. Yep. Their current iteration of this mashup theme is the Alternate Reality series. Right. Powercaster, I think, was one of them. I kind of like that one. There's the 66, which is okay. Meteora, eh. It's a weirdo shape that they didn't really go anywhere with. Right. So I kind of like that. Yeah. You gotta try it. Try and decide. Is it hello or goodbye? Goodbye or goodbye? Fender has the history of mashing stuff up going back to the late 60s and continuing to this day. The one we have in front of us, the Offset Special 2012 from the Pawn Shop series of mashups, Ed. Yep. Buy or deny? Deny. Deny! Don't like the color. Let me ask you, what would it take to turn that into a buy? Different color? At this point, nothing. I suppose if you said, Ed, I've got this guitar, I don't want it. I'm literally going to throw this in the garbage, Ed, or burn it. I would say like, (laughs) okay, I'll take that home and put it on my rack. What about you? I think I'm in the same boat, but I don't super dislike it. I think as I've played it through this episode, I'm coming to find that it goes down easy. (laughs) You don't have to fight with this thing. And that mastery trim arm is super smooth. Yep. I've played some dirt, I've played some reverb, played some funky stuff, and it seems to take all of it well. Yep. It sounds really, really good. Just, I'm not a big tobacco sunburst guy. Black would do it? Yeah. It sounds awesome. Someone's going to like it. One of our viewers should get this. Yeah, you know, a fella could do worse than buy one of those things. Yeah, I think so. We can look at the prime models of Fender stuff like Telecaster, Stratocaster, Jaguar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And know how they've held up over time. I kind of wonder how this stuff holds up into the future. 
they're still making the Jag Stang, so it must be doing something. A competition Mustang vintage four grand today. Yeah. Four grand for a Mustang that you could buy for 175 bucks in 1992. That is the power of a genre-defining guitar. Somebody's just going to walk around with one of these pawn shop dailies and strike lightning. I would not count on that. Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to, once again, defer to the 80% and say, not going to happen. The 80 percenters. Yep, yep. <laughs> How do you feel about that, John? I feel pretty good about that. You I don't feel know, terrible. I guess. Yeah, I feel no, horrible, you feel terrible yeah. about it. Uh, that's it, Ed. I think you did a great job today, John. Thanks. You didn't dissuade me in the slightest about this guitar, but you know, you can't win them all. Can't win them all. You didn't even dissuade yourself. I would pass, even though I admire the way it sounds. Mm-hmm. Them's the brakes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't win them all, Fender. Sorry. We'll put pictures of this up on the interwebs. Sure. On our Instagram page. Yeah. At the High Gain. Mm-hmm. Facebook, at the High Gain. Why not? Even on our webpage, thehighgain.com. We're going to put it everywhere. You go where you need to go. Love it. Let us know what you think. And yeah. as always, mm -hmm. we are a proud member yeah. of the Ruinous Media family of music-related podcasts. Musical overlords. Overlords. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you said corporate overlords. And they don't strike me as super corporate. The suits over there at Ruinous, <laughs> sitting up there in the C-suite with their big That's right. Cuban cigars uh -huh. and just like... Yep, and they're cut crystal decanters with like single malt scotches yeah, and the ruinous dudes yep they're nice to us yeah for right now for sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right then okay john all right bye bye